All right, here we go. Um, well, uh, g'day everyone. My name is Shabu. I have the great privilege of being one of the pastors at Canterbury Gardens Community Church. Uh, we as a church um, began a series in 1 Thessalonians and uh, towards the tail of 1 Thessalonians, uh, you have this beautiful picture the Apostle Paul writes about uh, for those who have died and also the return of Christ. And this is something, a theme that continues to go through 1 Thessalonians, which stirred some of our people in our church. Well, what is the view uh, and what are the views out there? Uh, now, in front of me, uh, I have Dr. Daryl Bock. Uh, Daryl is in a a follower of Jesus. Uh, he is also a New Testament scholar. Uh, he's the executive director and culture engagement at the Hendricks Center. Uh, and particularly, he serves at Dallas Theological Center in Dallas. Um, welcome, Daryl. Good to be with you. I wish I was on the other side of the ocean over by where you are, but alas, didn't happen this year. So, uh, so yeah. we're doing it this way. Yeah, that's right. And I, so, um, you know, when, if you Google Daryl Bock, uh, you will most likely find quite a variety of things on Daryl, all good, uh, and also um, quite a few different books, which I also have at home. Uh, but I had the great privilege of being in a class with Daryl when he was here in Melbourne, uh, here in the Yarra Valley. And one of the things I really appreciated was a few things. One, uh, his love to unpack uh, the Bible and God's word and to make it very practical. Uh, secondly, was also his love for the bar for basketball. The NBA finals were on, and in between, we would watch that. Uh, and now, this is an as an Aussie, I was a bit shocked. Daryl knows a bit about cricket, uh, cricket, and Aussie rules football, and a little bit about rugby. And I can even discuss netball. And wow. if you really get desperate, darts. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> in that order, I see. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, question. So, who do you follow in the um, in the cricket? Like, uh, do you have a team? That oh, you... the well, I follow the national uh, the national teams, the test matches, that yes. kind of thing, and yeah. uh, not so much, you know, well, what would be county cricket in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, and then some one day, but um, test matches uh, fascinate me. Um, okay. Uh, I tease people that it was a great way to learn a foreign language, but I learned German while watching cricket. Are you serious? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you watch the replay and you know you got 30 to 45 minutes to work on vocab and paradigms until oh, something wow. significant happens again. Wow. So, yeah. So that's my definition of cricket. Okay. And, and, and AFL? I mean, being in Melbourne. AFL, Victoria. yeah. I'm a Sydney Swans fan, which oh, will disappoint everyone in Melbourne. Wow. But, yeah. Yeah, so. it will disappoint many of us. So hopefully no one's <laughs> switched off yet. So it's all right. I'm into suffering. So you know, <laughs> when you support the Sydney Swans, you had a little short burst of glory, but yes. lately it's been pretty, pretty painful. Okay, no worries. Well, uh, Joe, I, look, I don't want to uh, take too much of your time. I thought we might uh, get into it, and so particularly we want to talk uh, the topic of eschatology. Uh, depending on who we are, some of us uh, will run away and flee and don't want to talk about it, deal with it. Some of us are like really into it, uh, reading everything, studying everything. Uh, and usually there's arguments over and some of us are in between. So just to kind of, for those of us who've never maybe uh, explored the Bible or, do, or just new to it, what, what does eschatology mean? What's, what, well, what's it's made up of two Greek words. Okay, eschatos and logos, last things, and then logos can mean all kinds of things, but it, it means the study of in this case. So the study of last things, but what really makes it confusing is you can talk about eschatology as something that already exists, it's mm -hmm. inaugurated, it's begun, mm -hmm. or you can talk about what I will call consummative eschatology, which is how things wrap up mm -hmm. in the end, where, where everything is headed. And because Jesus has arrival represented the beginning of the fulfillment of promise mm -hmm. you get inaugurated eschatology which most people don't talk about when they use the term yeah. but we are all if you're a believer you are an eschatological being how uh, about that that's okay good. That's you, good. you live in the world of eschatology you get the benefits some benefits of eschatology with more yet to come